Hi everyone, today's video recap will be one of the most trending, satirical black comedy film of 2022, it is, Triangle of Sadness. The film was directed and written by Ruben Ursland. The film centers on a voyage for the super rich, which sinks, leaving survivors including a style model big name couple, caught on an island. Now let's begin to dive into the plot and enjoy watching, likes and subscriptions are highly appreciated. Triangle of Sadness starts with Carl, Harris Dickinson, and Yaya, Charlby Dignitary, exploring the universe of top-of-the-line design and social media impact. We see a gathering of models helpless before a questioner at the casting call. The questioner has a camera, is credentialed, and goes ahead and energetically plays with models who are anxious to please since they're currently a prospective employee meeting. At the point when the models go into the space for the proper tryout, they're at the complete order of the projecting chiefs. It's threatening. Being under the investigation of a room loaded with individuals who are passing judgment on your each actual trademark. It doesn't make any difference who Carl is. The casting chiefs couldn't care less about him personally, they care about what he resembles. Eventually, they reject him. As Carl presents to the casing chiefs, showing them all of his displaying abilities, one advises him to loosen up his triangle of sadness. They then make sense of it's the point between the eyebrows, over the edge of the nose, beneath the brow. At the fashion show, we see more power uneven characters become possibly the most important factor when individuals managing everything kick crowd individuals from seats to account for celebrity visitors. It doesn't make any difference on the off chance that the others previously had those seats, they could not hope to compare to whoever has quite recently shown up. So they're moved. In the meantime, Yaya is a model in the show. In this way we show up at the supper with Yaya. We've quite recently had two situations where Carl was short of what others. First it was the casting chiefs, and then it was the other crowd individuals at the fashion show. Presently he's out with his effective, model sweetheart. She was simply in a high profile show, while Carl found rejected from a line of work. So Triangle has previously shown us the distinction in power and accomplishment among Carl and Yaya. However, it investigates it further when the check shows up. The conventional gender stereotype is that the man pays for supper. Be that as it may, we as of now have an inclination Carl has relatively little cash and Yaya does. Later in the evening, they at long last consent to be in to a lesser degree a heartfelt connection and a greater amount of a tender business organization. By reclassifying what they will be, they rethink the jobs, getting through the past generalizations. Cash is at the core of every one of the three of those situations, regardless of whether it's clear. The yacht is intriguing on the grounds that it's a microcosm. What we found in the initial not many scenes was Carl and Yaya in the more extensive world. Be that as it may, presently they're in the small universe of the yacht. Everybody there is wealthy. Everybody there is a guest of essential significance to the team. The group needs to ensure everybody on board is cheerful, which is the reason we get the we say yes scene. There's a significant succession there. Ursland shows the stewards and attendants and how lively and effervescent they are. Then, at that point, slices to lower in the boat where we see other group individuals in an undeniably less convivial climate. While the stewards slash attendants are in brilliant varieties and cheerful, individuals beneath deck look more drained and pummeled. A comparative polarity occurs during the commander's supper. The start of the scene shows the serving staff and how tidy, legitimate, and lively they are. The finish of the scene shows the cleaning team coming through and managing all the regurgitation and spilled food. So we have this power structure where it's the guests, the general population introducing team, then the remainder of the group. Triangle then, at that point, shows how these different elements communicate with each other. How the guests treat the staff and team. How the staff treats the guests and team. How the team treats the staff and guests. One incredible model is at the earliest reference point when Carl sees a group part standing shirtless and smoking. Both he and Yaya are somewhat floored by the person's manliness and lighthearted disposition. Carl, being envious and unreliable, goes to Paula, the head of staff, and gripes about the person. A couple of moments later, Carl observes the person being sent home, terminated because of Carl's protest. It's a shocking second in light of the fact that Carl went from having totally no power in the past circumstances to unexpectedly getting somebody fired. It simply shows how the yacht is a totally different world. One guest is basically as significant as another guest, no matter what their total assets. In any case, the entire framework gets tossed into chaos when a guest makes the ridiculous interest to have the whole group swim in the sea. The aftermath of that request prompts the prepares forgetting about food, the food ruins, however it's actually served to the guests, and the guests all get irately sick. Join that with the commander evading his obligations and choosing the skipper's supper on an evening of a tempest, against Paula's advisement, 
And we have the enormous, climactic scene where every one of the guests are regurgitating and pooping. The group is stowing away in light of the fact that the Tempest is tossing the boat forward and backward, while Chief Thomas and Dimitri drink in discussion over the radio framework. Also, the outcome is the finished breakdown of the yacht's microcosm. At the point when pirates assault the yacht and explode it with a hand projectile, sinking it, it's a particularly metaphorical second in light of the fact that the yacht truly is cash passing on the water. This object of wealth and extravagance. The privateers won't most likely ever have the profit to fit the bill to be a guest on the yacht. In any case, they can barge in on that world and send it into the sea's dark profundities. It feels exceptionally representative for the sort of unrest we've seen all through mankind's set of experiences. Where those with fewer ascents up and oust the rich. Winston and Clementine were weapon vendors. Their fortune was produced using assembling and selling weapons that others use in outfitted struggle. It's blood cash. But they appear to be so curious and kind. They're ostensibly beasts. Furthermore, it's an explosive they made that the privateers toss onto the yacht. It detonates in Clementine's grasp. I believe that is a sign of approval for the repeating idea of these things. Winston and Clementine address the wealthy class who exploit others. While the privateers address the majority who in the long run hold on to control of the framework and turn it against people with great influence. Presently we're considerably further from civilization. The yacht was at that point a degree eliminated from the initial scenes with Carl and Yaya. A pseudo world that was like this present reality however with a sufficiently extraordinary pecking order that somebody like Carl tracked down himself, but for a brief time with undeniably more power than any other time in recent memory. However, on the island, it's totally unanchored from development. It doesn't make any difference what anyone's identity is back in reality. Their financial balances don't make any difference. The only thing that is in any way important is what they can offer that gathering based on the ocean front and conditions of endurance. Of the eight survivors, everything except one are pointless. Carl and Yaya can't demonstrate their direction to food. Dimitri runs an organization. Jarmo's a coder. Therese is restricted because of her stroke intricacies. Nelson is a technician, or privateer. What's more, Paula's staff the executives implies literally nothing. Just Abigail, one of the boat's cleaners, can fabricate a fire, fish, and cook. She's the only one with abilities appropriate for endurance. Furthermore, we rapidly see her rethink the progressive system. Paula attempts to in any case be in charge, however Abigail takes care of everybody, declining to take care of them except if they recognize her authority. Abigail has laid out a matriarchy. She controls everything. Furthermore, in addition to the fact that Abigail runs everything, she takes Carl from Yaya. Yaya is a runway model. This individual esteemed for her excellence. Abigail isn't. She's in her mid-fifties, right around 30 years more seasoned than Carl. Yet, she accepts Carl as her darling and has him to the place where he's prepared to say a final farewell to Yaya for Abigail. A relationship could never occur in reality. Be that as it may, it's perhaps on the island due to the altogether unique monetary framework and the subsequent power structure. Carl's just worth in this matriarchy is his magnificence. Thus he winds up seeking far superior treatment than Yaya, a total inversion of the start of the film. Yaya is the one profiting from Carl's recently discovered wealth as pretzel parcels. Yaya and Abigail track down the vacant confidential ocean side of a hotel. But the retreat isn't around the ocean. It's above it, on some precipice. A lift is all that isolates them from a revisitation of development. Yaya is anxious to go. Abigail holds back, professing to require a second to utilize the washroom. As Yaya pauses, Abigail gets a monster rock and gradually shut in, unbeknownst to the model who gazes out at the water and fantasizes about being back in reality. Yaya offers Abigail a task as Yaya's partner. We then, at that point, cut to Carl. He runs through the wilderness. Whipped and cut by branches. We have no clue about why he's running, or where to. Here the film ends. Thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the film. Don't forget to like the videos and subscribe to my channel for more videos and updates.